everyone, and I'm of course John Doe, here in my humble abode, right here in Tokyo, Japan, and we're going to do another edition of the Ghost Letters Report. Now, if you may or may not be aware, recently, uh, the UN, under the uh, International Whaling Commission, uh, has banned Japan from doing any, wha any more whaling in the Arctic. Now, this has been going on for quite some time. The country who brought the uh, suit against Japan was, of course, Australia. Now, you may not know a lot about this, so let's take a look at this just a little bit to give you some uh, background. This whole situation goes back to um, the rules regarding whaling internationally. Now, whaling is effect commercial whaling is effectively banned. But Japan is being allowed to continue to do this under uh, Article 8 of the rules regarding commercial whaling. I'll read this to you so you can understand what, what they're using, what they have been using to do this. Article 8 states, Notwithstanding anything contained in this convention, any contracting government may grant to any of its nationals a special permit authorizing the nation to kill, take, and treat whales for purpose of scientific research subject to such restrictions as to number and subject and to such other conditions as the contracted government thinks fit. And the killing, taking, and treating of whales in accordance with the provisions in this article shall be exempt from the operation of this convention. Each contracting government shall report at once to, to the commission all such authorizations which it has granted. Each contracted government may at any time revoke any such special permit which it has granted. Any wells taken under special permits shall, so far as pre protect, uh, predictable, be processed, and a proceed shall be dealt with in accordance with directions issued by the government in which the permit was granted. Now that's the basic provision that has allowed Japan to engage in whaling in the Arctic under scientific research. Now the problem with this is it's been very obviously clear that here in Japan it's commercial whaling. It's widely known. Whales are sold, sold on the open market. Majority of the meat they attempt to sell at open market and only a marginal amount they actually keep for so-called scientific data. Now the main reason this this uh, ban went through was that Australia brought up the point that they had many concerns. The key one that really swayed the commission was that Japan failed to provide evidence that they had looked into alternative ways of doing the research, collecting data on whales, their health and whale numbers, uh, especially non-lethal methods. Japan could not show that they had went into this. And also, the scientific data the Japanese government claims they have been uh, collecting from this hunt have shown to be marginal and insufficient to provide any, uh, any data that helps understand whale populations and health of the whales in general. So you have that. So we have this great uh, victory for environmentalism. Now, some, especially the far right here in Japan, and of course the Japanese government, makes the claim that it's our part of our culture. Well, let's look at a little bit of background on whaling in Japan. Now, whaling has been going back for thousands of years in Japan, but it wasn't until post-World War II era of Japan that whales hunted and killed for consumption skyrocketed. The reason for this was that the country had basically been destroyed, and they were struggling to feed the people here, uh, especially to get enough protein for people to eat. So, whale hunting skyrocketed. But once uh, Japan started to reorganize itself and we could function, operate, uh, have agriculture get back up again, they could establish some trade deals again, uh, whaling consumption dropped very low. To the point that these days, the only people who really eat whale meat are the privileged bourgeois here and people who live in small local villages where the whale, where the whale hunting happens. 
Now they go out and come in. Now this does not totally stop all Japan's whaling activities. They also have a domestic whaling uh, program as well as some other hunts in the Pacific and maybe in the Atlantic. I'm not sure if they still do that. But we have to look at exactly what brought this about. Uh, now remember, Australia and Japan are capitalist countries. That's their superstructure. So we must look at the political economy here and what's really behind this. Now Australia dragged this to the UN and it's been going on for several years. Now, and also at the same time, interestingly enough, Japan and Australia uh, have been, just until the last few days, really at a uh, standstill in negotiating a free trade agreement or a trade economic trading agreement where Japan would greatly reduce tariffs on imports of Australian beef as well as increase grain imports from Australia. Now, Japan has not wanted to do this for obvious reasons. Uh, here in Japan, uh, meat can be quite expensive at times and, and it's really high price. So it allowed cheap imports come in. Obviously, drop the price of meat so the proletariat would be able to eat more meat if they wanted to. We could feed ourselves better. Because, you know, often you, know, you go to the supermarket, you buy smaller portions if you're just working class like me. But, you know, the bourgeois here does not, do not want that. So, Australia is looking for something to wield their political economy, the power of their political economy, onto Japan, get the bourgeois competing capitalist class here to give in and sign the agreement. So they find something. Ah, whaling. So if they can get this on Japan, ban whaling, that's a message to the capitalists and bourgeois here in Japan that the capitalists in Australia can wield their power against you and can limit your ability to collect resources to feed your own people and to make capital profit, number one. So I noticed, as soon as this ban became effective, very quickly, Japan and Australia finally come to an agreement on trade, and this agreement goes down. So I think it's a clear case of where competing capitalist forces made a slight environmental victory, but it's not really what they were after. They just wanted to get one over on each other. So now the capitalist class in Australia can get more imports into Japan. Tariffs are cheaper. So that's going to be at markets going to be lower, so more people are going to buy it. They're going to make more power, more money at the cost or expense of the bourgeois and the capitalist class here in Japan. So I thought this would be interesting for everyone to check this out find out a little bit more about this issue, and get a breakdown. If it's the first time you've seen me, hey, go ahead and subscribe. should be some type of clickable link right here. You'll get lots of videos like this, and a few surprises from, as well. So until next time, this is me, John Doll from Tokyo. Checking out.